All right, we're going to the book of uh, Revelation. We're going to the book of Revelation, chapter 17. And there we find uh, a prophecy here about, uh, about uh, the, uh, this power that the Bible describes uh, in Daniel 7, in uh, Revelation chapter 13, verses uh, 1 through 10. The same power that we also see in Revelation 18, uh, that the Bible is also dealing with uh, in uh, Revelation 17, beginning in verse 1. Revelation 17, beginning in verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying, Unto me come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore. The what? The, the, the judgment of the great whore, that sitteth upon uh, many waters, with whom the kings of the earth uh, have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth uh, have been made drunk with the wine of uh, of a fornication. Now, this language here in verse 2, that the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk by the wine of a fornication, we also find that uh, in uh, Revelation 14, uh, verse 8, and also in chapter 18, uh, verses 1 through 4, and in chapter 18, uh, we're going to look at that in a moment, in chapter 18, uh, we saw that uh, as a result of uh, the nations, many people, tongues and languages that have been made drunk by the wine of uh, Babylon, we were given a message uh, to uh, cry aloud against the sins of uh, Babylon. Let's keep reading verse 3. It says, So he carried me away in the, in the spirit into the wilderness. I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads uh, and ten horns. And the woman uh, was arrayed uh, in purple and scarlet colored and decked with gold uh, and precious stones uh, and pearls, uh, having a golden cup in her hand full of abomination and fearfulness of her fornication. Now we notice here the color here that is mentioned. What's, what's the colors? Purple and scarlet. Purple and scarlet. What's missing? What is missing? Now, this is, uh, when we look at the sanctuary, for example, we saw those colors as well, the purple and the scar scarlet. Blue. blue is missing. What does blue represent? Purity, holiness. Represent the law of God. Blue represents the law of God. And hence, the reason why the latter part of verse uh, 4 says uh, that power is full, which we know is the papacy, the Vatican, it's full of abominations and filthiness uh, over fornication. And the Bible calls it Mystery Babylon the Great, uh, the mother of harlots and abominations of uh, the earth. You notice that uh, the Bible says that Babylon uh, is responsible, modern day Babylon that is, is responsible for the abominations of the earth, for the filthiness of the earth, uh, for, the, for everything that is happening uh, in the earth. And that is a uh, a uh, true statement. Behind the scene, Babylon controls the nations of this world. Behind the scene, Babylon is involved in uh, almost, if not everything, uh, that is taking place in the world. And may I even add uh, even some of the so-called uh, natural disasters. You know, the harp, you've heard of harp, right? Mm -hmm. Who's behind those things? And, and you, you've heard of uh, the hurricane, uh, not hurricane, but uh, the earthquake uh, in Haiti right. in uh, 2010. And uh, see, I grew up in the island, on the island. I grew up there. I had never heard of uh, earthquake. Never heard of it. Never, never experienced it. Never heard a, any uh, adult our uh, grandpa or grandma telling stories about earthquake. Never heard of such a thing. Never experienced it. Hurricane, yes. Earthquake, mm -mm. When I heard about this back in 2010, uh, um, I came home and then uh, I, uh, I heard about there was a hurricane. Uh, it was in the news. Uh, not hurricane, but earthquake in Haiti. I said, hmm, that must be a mistake. Uh, me they meant to say hurricane, right? But then, no, it was an earthquake. I said, okay, something is, uh, right. is not right here. Something does not add up here. But then later on, 
as uh, the things develop, there was uh, Hugo Chavez from Venezuela. That was before he died. He passed away. Uh, he said that uh, it, harp was, was used to, to cause that earthquake. So Babylon is behind some of these things, the wars of this world. Babylon is responsible for these things. So as I mentioned last Sabbath and the Sabbath before, I believe uh, once again that uh, as Seventh-day Adventists, knowing what we know, at least what we should know, what we see developing in the media, I believe uh, that God... Uh, also wants his people to jump into this and uh, enlighten the world as we read in Revelation 18. Go to Revelation 18. Revelation 18. Notice the message there and then we're going to compare that with some of the scriptures here. We have been given a message, the three angels' messages, to enlighten the world with the glory of God which is what we find here in Revelation 18. Remember the fourth angel of Revelation 18 will join together with the third angel of uh, Revelation 14 and to finish the last work, to finish the work in these last days. V chapter 18 and verse 1, And after all these things, after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was uh, lightened uh, with His uh, glory. Now again, uh, the earth lightened uh, with His uh, glory. What is the glory? One more time. What is the glory? The glory is the character. The glory that represents character of God. Remember Moses says to God, show me your glory. Show me thy glory. And God uh, show Moses his character. He's a merciful, he's a gracious God. He's a God of justice as well. So the glory there represents his character. The angel represents a messenger. That's what the word means. It means a messenger. Angelos, the Greek word, means a messenger. And who are the messengers? We are the messengers. So this angel come down with great power. That means uh, we have come to a point where we need to be clothed fully with the righteousness, with the glory of Jesus Christ and enlighten the world with the glory of Jesus Christ, with this message, because as you look at the following verses, it tells us why this angel come down with great power. It, that angel, that messenger, or these messengers have a message. And what's the message? There's the message, verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and is become uh, the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage uh, of every unclean uh, and uh, hateful bird. Similar language we saw in uh, chapter 17 as we read uh, a moment ago. So the message for this time uh, is a message uh, to cause the world to not only see the glory of God, but to call the world and to show, to help the world to see the true nature and characteristics of Babylon. Because as it, as it stands right now, millions, millions cannot really see the true nature of Babylon, cannot fully see as the Spirit of Prophecy tells us, and also the Bible tells us, that in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that this power works for Satan. That's what Paul says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, speaking of the men of sin, which is the same as the little horn of Daniel 7, which is the same as the beast, first beast of uh, Revelation 13, which is the same as the harlot woman of Revelation 17, and uh, the same here as Babylon of Revelation 18. So millions cannot see this, but this is why we have been giving the understanding of this message to expose Babylon, to enlighten the world with the glory of Jesus Christ and to help them to see the true nature once again of Babylon. And as I mentioned before, the uh, uh, media has been doing a great job in exposing some of that. Now go to Revelation 14. Here is one of the reasons why that this message is important, this message is needed, 
that the world needs to understand it and that we need to proclaim it because uh, ah, ca shall they hear without a preacher, the Bible says. Notice with me, chapter 14, this is the reason why this message is important. You look at the verses 9 through 11, this is a warning from receiving, from worshiping the beast and his image and receive his mark in, the, in, in your forehead or, or in your hand. Because if you do, verse 10, verse 10 says, what would happen to you and I? According to verse 10, you will experience the wrath of God, which by the way, this is what Jesus experienced beginning in the garden of uh, Gethsemane. You remember the prayer of Jesus? When Jesus says, O oh, Father, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be, do be done. What was the cup? That's the same cup right here in verse 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. That was the same cup that the, of the wrath of God that Jesus experienced so that you and I would not have to experience this. And that's, what the, that's the reason why this message is so important uh, to give uh, to the world. Notice with me on the screen. It says here, from Review and Herald, October 13th, 1904. We see before us a special work to be done. What is it? A special work. What's the work? We are now to pray as never before for the Holy Spirit's guidance. Let us seek the Lord with the whole heart that we may find Him. We have received the, what's the word there? Light. The light of the three angels' uh, messages. And we need now to come decidedly to the front uh, and take our position on the side of truth. The 14th chapter of Revelation is a chapter of deepest interest. This scripture will soon be mis uh, I'm sorry, understood in all its bearings. And the messages given to John, the revelator, will be repeated with distinct utterance. What does it mean, distinct utterance? When, what, what it means when you offer something? I mean, you're speaking, you're proclaiming, right? So that message must be under, uh, understood in all its bearings, she says, because uh, it is needed because the, we are coming to an end. It's a special work, as she says here. And we need to be filled as never before for the Holy Spirit's guidance, which goes along with uh, the message we just looked at of Revelation 18, verse 1. The messenger that comes down with great power, that also represents being filled with the Holy Spirit, the same way the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit before they begin their ministry. That means uh, as uh, if we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we will be preaching this message with uh, boldness. Amen? The same way the disciples preached that message with uh, boldness and so that uh, the earth could be lightened with the glory of God. Go with me to Acts chapter 17. Let's uh, try to... Uh, Describe what would take place as we take this message to heart and uh, with, with our whole heart uh, and go and uh, present this message to the world. Even now, as we see what's, what's taking place in the world. Notice with me, it says here in Acts chapter 17. Again, we looked at uh, this morning, uh, verse 6 here where it says uh, in verse 6 of Acts chapter seven, 17, uh, as Paul uh, and, uh, and, and the others uh, were going about uh, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 6 says, And when they found not them not, found not Paul and the others, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have done what? Turn uh, the world upside down, uh, I come hither, also, they have turned the world upside down. How? By preaching the gospel, By preaching, uh, the gospel of uh, Jesus Christ. Notice with me. And the Bible goes on to say, skip on down to verse 10. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who 
coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Notice, these, who are the these there? The Berians. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they receive, what have they received? The word with all readiness of mind and such the scriptures, how often? Daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believe also of honorable women, which were Greeks and of men, not uh, a few. So what happened here as they proclaim the message, many of these uh, people in that area believe their eyes were open. Now they were able to see, to see the truth. Remember, some of them here were Greeks and they had many gods that they worship, similar to uh, the uh, the Roman religion. Notice another passage here. So as we proclaim this message, may, many eyes will be opened. They will go back to Scripture and, st and study the Scripture daily. And they will see the truth and they will embrace it. Notice with me, Acts chapter 2. And what else would happen as we proclaim this message? And uh, when, they, when the people realize uh, the sin of Babylon, the darkness they were in, what would they do? Notice with me, Acts chapter 2. This again, uh, the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. They went about preaching the message with boldness. Verse 37 of Acts chapter 2. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked. What happened to them? They were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? So what happened to, to people as they hear this message? They were pricked to their heart. What does that mean? Conviction. Amen. They were pricked to their heart and they wanted to do something about it. Their eyes are open now. They can see the light now. Why? Because of the messengers that are filled with the Spirit of God. And uh, what, what, what did they do next? What happened next? 38, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, what's the word? Repent. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of, uh, of the water, of the Holy Ghost. Question now, why is Babylon fallen? According to uh, chapter 18. But because of her sins. But what's the call within uh, that message of Revelation 18? Come out of her my people. So that means God has his people. Now, notice this with me. God has his people in Babylon. Amen. He has his people. Sister White says there are faithful Christians even within uh, the Roman Catholic Church. So God has his people within uh, Babylon. They are worshiping God according to the, the knowledge that they have, the dictate of their heart. But they have a hunger for more truth because their heart is, they have a sincere heart. They love God with all their heart, minds, and souls. And as we expose what's happening out there, they will, and, and as they hear these things, they will go like the Berian, search the scriptures for themselves to see if these things are true. Then what, what do you think they will do? As we just read here in verse 37, their heart will be pricked, they will be convicted, and then they would ask the question, what shall we do? Because they realize uh, that they were in errors, and they would uh, come and join the movement, the remnant uh, of the seed of the woman. Notice another passage with me. Notice with me. But again, uh, Coming down, as this, uh, the Bible described this angel that comes down, with great power. Great power means uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? That's the fourth angel's message there. Filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And also speaking with boldness. And this was uh, the life of Jesus Christ. Notice with me. They said of Jesus, Matthew, let's go to Matthew chapter 7. They said of Jesus, Never have we heard a, a, a man speak that way. Notice with me. Chapter 7 of uh, the book of Matthew. Let's begin in verse 28 of uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 7. It says here. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. And it came to pass. When Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were water. 
What's the word? Astonish at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. That is the attitude of the 144,000. The messenger that we just read about in Revelation 18.1, he did what? He taught them as one having authority and not of the, of the scribes. That means we came down, he was preaching with power. And that captivated people's minds and attentions. They heard the words that they have never heard before. That's what we were told as well. Notice with me another passage here. That's what we were told would happen in, the, in these last days. Luke chapter 4. Go to the book of Luke this time. Luke chapter 4. Notice again another similar passage here. The people were astonished. And the same thing was said in Acts uh, chapter 17, and we just looked at uh, that when they heard uh, Jason and Paul and Silas preaching, they said, these men have turned the world how? Upside down. Yeah. Notice with me. It says here, or maybe they were turning the world upside up uh, or the other way around or right side up or something like that. Notice with me. It says here in uh, Luke chapter 4, are you there? Right. And the Bible says, notice in verse 22, it says, and all bear him, him there, that's witness. Uh, that's Jesus, I'm sorry. And all bear him witness and wonder at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? So when they heard Jesus speaking, the words that, come, that were coming out of his mouth, and he speaks with, uh, with uh, authority, they said, wait a minute. Don't we know this guy? Isn't that jo Joseph's son? When did they learn all, all these things? It was as a result of being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. You can have that experience and I can have that experience. All we need to do is just like the disciples. Jesus commanded them in Acts chapter 1 to wait in Jerusalem. Wait in Jerusalem for the promise. And what was the promise? The Holy Spirit. But before that, they were supposed to empty themselves of what? Right. Of self. They were supposed to empty themselves of self. Pride, envy, bitterness, fighting for position. In order for them uh, to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. In order for them uh, to be able to speak, to preach, to proclaim the message with boldness. So that men... As it was said in Acts chapter 4, as a matter of fact, let's go to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, no, notice with me. Keep a finger there to the book of Luke, we'll come back to that. Acts chapter 4, it was said of uh, the disciples as uh, they were preaching uh, this message. Notice with me, it says in Acts chapter 4, verse 8, are you there? Yeah. It says, and then Peter filled with what? With whom? Oh, with the Holy Ghost said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to, be Im to the important men, by what means he is made whole, be known unto you and to all the people of Israel, that by whose name? By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, him ye crucified, whom God had raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you have whole. So they were going about doing this without fear. And the, the people were glorifying God. But in spite of the persecutions that were coming, in spite of the opposition, in spite of the religious leaders forbidding them to preach in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's go back now to act uh, to where we look rather I'm sorry we were in Luke chapter 4. We read the uh, verse 22 there in Luke chapter chapter 4. Now let, let, let's uh, let's look at uh, uh, verse 32. It says in verse 32. Well let's begin verse 31. And and he came down to Capernaum a city of Galilee and taught them on the Sabbath days and they were what what's the word there? Astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with uh, power. power. So wherever Jesus would go, and uh, as we just looked at other disciples, 
they stirred up the people. They stirred up the people. The teachings of Christ, the teachings of uh, the disciples, not only were being proclaimed with boldness and authority, but uh, they were being proclaimed in a way where as, uh, it caught people's attention. They were being proclaimed in a way where people felt like they had never heard such things before. The people were stirred up. And this is exactly what's going on in our world today. People are being stirred up by the commotion for the past few weeks of what has been happening in the Vatican. There's been a lot of commotion. People are on edge, but they need more than what the media is feeding them. Notice with me. Let's look at another passage, John. Which book? John, John chapter 7. John chapter 7, uh, and uh, let's begin uh, in verse 26 of the book of John uh, chapter 7. And uh, notice again uh, it, that the message uh, of Christ, the manner of uh, He spake. He says here in Acts chapter 7, beginning in verse 26, uh, and uh, the Bible says, But lo, He speaketh, what, how? Boldly. He speaketh how? Boldly. And they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? What, what, what was the reason why they said this? The people said this. Verse 25. They then said some of them of, of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? And then it says, But lo, he speaketh what? boldly and they say nothing unto him do the rulers know indeed that this is the very the very Christ how be it we know this man whence he is but Christ cometh no man knoweth whence uh, he is so again what happened here there was a commotion the people were stirred up they were stirred up see that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is why Paul says, as we looked at this morning, that he was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not something, brothers and sisters, that we uh, just uh, do or uh, perform in our home. The world needs it. The world needs to see it. The world needs to hear it. And this is how the world would be stirred up, especially right now. We, uh, when it comes to uh, diet, for example, when it comes to dress reform, you see, the world needs to be stirred up. Sometimes we don't even have to say anything. Just by the way we conduct ourselves, just by the way we dress, the world will take notice. They will ask questions. They would ask questions. I remember... Uh, one time, I was not an Adventist then. This was a, long, a while back. I was, uh, um, I was in Florida at, at the time. And uh, I uh, walked into a store. And then uh, while I was there, uh, a few ladies walked in. And right away, I could tell the difference between those ladies and, uh, and the rest who were in there. I could tell the difference. I, I, I was not an Adventist, but I, I knew they were Adventists. They didn't tell me that they were Adventists, but I knew they were Adventists. I just looked at uh, their, their mannerism, their conduct, and the way they dress. And I said, though, they, it was very simple. And I said, these ladies are Seventh-day Adventists. And I asked them. They said, yeah, we're Seventh-day Adventists. So just like that, we can start up. We can uh, cause the world to ask questions. Why you eat uh, certain ways? Why you don't eat like the rest of the world? Why you don't go to the movies? Why you don't watch uh, movies and things like that? Why you don't uh, hang out uh, with the rest of us? You know, just simple things like that. You are causing a stir. You're causing people to wonder, to ask questions. And as people, as people ask questions, then now you have... You have been given an opportunity to share. To share about uh, Jesus Christ. To tell them uh, what Jesus Christ has done for you. To, you, know, to, you now have the opportunity to even share with that individual that uh, this is where you were. But this is uh, where you are now. Then the person now can relate 
to your story, the person can say, wow, if God can do this for you, then he can do it for me as well. So when, when, when we are commended to eat a certain way, to dress a certain way, it's not because God is trying to put restrictions on us, but it's because God, number one, loves us, He cares about us, but also God knows there are some that are out there that He wants to reach, but the, perhaps that individual can, could only be reached by the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, just by your conduct and by the way you eat, you dress, or, or thing, places you don't go, what, whatever it is. You understand what I'm saying, right? So that's one of the ways we can stir up the minds, the world, so that they can ask questions. We're going to, to the book of John, chapter 21. Book of John, chapter 21. Notice with me, book of John, chapter, chapter 21. So we need, uh, we need to, uh, to stir up uh, the world and uh, to uplift uh, Jesus Christ. Notice with me, this was a, a conversation Jesus was having uh, with, uh, with Peter here. This was after the resurrection uh, and uh, the, uh, coming uh, close to the ascension of uh, Jesus Christ. Jesus says to, to Peter, was having a conversation with Peter. He asked Peter three times, remember the conversation? Uh, lovest thou me? Lovest thou me? And then uh, Peter said, I love you, Lord. And then Jesus said, feed my, feed my sheep. Then uh, it says in verse 18, Verily, verily I say unto thee, Jesus says to Peter, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest uh, whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thine hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. So what did Jesus say? of uh, Peter here. Remember three times Peter, uh, Christ rather, Christ asked Peter, lovest thou me, lovest thou me, lovest thou me, Peter. What was Christ trying to do here? Trying to see if Peter will empty himself. But notice what again, uh, what we just read here. That Christ says, when uh, you were young, Peter, you, you would do things your own way. You do whatever you wanted to do, Peter. But, then he says, But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thine hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Christ was uh, prophesying about uh, the way Peter was going to die, and willing, that's the key word there, willing to die for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Peter, was no longer the Peter who tried to do things his own way, tried to get air, things under the control. He was willing to sacrifice his life for the gospel of Jesus Christ so that someone would come to know our loving Jesus. Amen? Amen. Would, so that someone would come to know our loving Savior. So Peter, it was the same Peter that we just read about in Acts 4 who stood up with boldness and said, when uh, he was threatened to uh, st stop speaking in the name of Jesus or healing in the name of Jesus, he says, we ought to obey God rather than who? Rather than man. It was that same Peter. He sp spake with boldness. He was no longer the Peter trying to save self as uh, he did when he denied his master. Three times. Hence the reason why Christ asked uh, Peter three times, if you love me. Because it was three times Peter denied his master. Mm. Amen. Christ was trying uh, to cause Peter to go back to the betrayal. Amen. <laughs> go back to the betrayal. The scene of the betrayal. That he heard those words coming out of Peter's mouth. Uh, I know not this man three times, even curse the third time. I, did, I know not this man. I don't know what you're talking about. I've, I've never known him. Christ was trying to also tell Peter, I have forgiven thee, Peter. I have forgiven thee, Peter. Like the woman at the world, uh, at the, who was caught in adultery. Go and sin no more. 
I love you, P Peter. Feed my sheep. sheep. Feed my sheep. That's our mission. That's our work in these last days. But again, we must speak the word as if we were kings. What do I mean by that? That means with boldness. As if, uh, just like uh, it was said of Jesus, he spake as one that has authority. This is what uh, we read about in Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Notice with me how we should be speaking here. Ecclesiastes, which book are you going to? Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter, chapter 8. Uh, notice with me what the Word of God says here. In the book uh, of uh, Ecclesiastes, Solomon says, uh, chapter 8, uh, and uh, let's, let's look at the verse, uh, verse 4 in, of chapter 8. Uh, it says here, well, let's back up. Who is the wise man? Verse 1. Who is the wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a, of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment, and that in regard of the oath of God. Be not hasty to go out of his sight, and stand up not in an evil thing, for he doeth who whatsoever pleaseth him. Where the word of a there it is, where the word of a king is, there is what? There is what? Power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? Where the word of a king is, uh, there is what? Power. power. Did God give his church power yes. before he sent them out? Yes. Is Christ a king? Yes. So we got our power from the king. So we must preach the word. Uh, just like we read in Revelation 18, uh, that that angel came down with power. Power. That's how the gospel of Jesus Christ will attract many. And that goes back to Revelation chapter 14, uh, verses 6 uh, through to 12. And that is that where we find the three angels' messages for these last days. Notice with me on the screen. Uh, it says... Uh, Manuscript 32, 1896, the proclamation of the first, second, and third angel's messages has been located by the word of inspiration. Notice, not a peg or pen is to be removed. The first and second messages were given when? In 1843 and 1844. Let's pause there. What do we call that era? Great awakening. The Great Awakening. Another name. What's another name for it? The midnight cry. And at the time, we were not the Laodicean church. We were the Philadelphia church. We were the Philadelphia church. We, we had the zeal for preaching uh, the word of God with boldness. And that's what the many did. And they gave up everything mm -hmm. and went about preaching that, the, the gospel, the soon return of Jesus Christ with boldness. Back to the screen. It says, and uh, we are now under the proclamation of the third, but all three of the messages are still to be proclaimed. It is uh, just as essential now as ever before that they shall be repeated to those uh, who are seeking for the truth. They shall do what? Be repeated to those who are seeking for the truth. By pen and voice, we are to sound the proclamation, showing, uh, notice carefully, their order and the application of the prophecies that bring us to the third angel's message. There cannot be a third without the first and second. These messages we are to give to the world in publications, in discourses, showing in the line of prophetic history the things that have been and the things that will water, that will be. So we must proclaim the message with a boldness, and that's what it means here, to use uh, publication, discourses, whatever means, the social media, whatever avenue, whatever door that God has opened. We must uh, use that. We must use whatever medium uh, to proclaim uh, the gospel of uh, Jesus Christ with, uh, with uh, boldness. Amen? Mm -hmm. no, amen? amen. That's, that's our message. Notice with me another statement here. It says here, Thus, the message of the third angel will be proclaimed. And as a result of that message being proclaimed, what happened? The sins of uh, Babylon will be laid open. All will be unmasked. But notice what happened next. By these solemn warnings, the people will, will be what? 
stirred. And what happened? Though thousands upon thousands will listen who have never heard words like these. In amazement, they hear the testimony that Babylon is the church fallen because of her errors and sins. That's what we read in Revelation 18. Hence the reason why we need to take advantage of what's happening now. Because as we proclaim this message, the people will be stirred. And uh, because uh, the message is being proclaimed with boldness, with authority. And uh, again, uh, going back to Revelation 18, Babylon is fallen because of her sins. And the angel, messenger, Angelos, come down with great power to enlighten the earth uh, with the glory of God and cry aloud that Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city. On the screen here, this is from a Catholic Herald, September 13th, 2018. Headline says, Archbishop Viganio has sparked a revolution no one can control. Now, this Archbishop here is the same Archbishop uh, that uh, last month uh, that uh, sent out a letter calling for the proper resignation. He's the one who's been behind a lot of those things that have been exposed on the media. Then plus we saw what has happened in Pennsylvania with the child abuse scandals and uh, in Germany and uh, many other nations. So notice with me, keep uh, that cardinal here in mind because we'll come back to this cardinal. But for now, back to the screen. It says, uh, Anybody considering a career in the Roman Curia is well uh, advised to avoid public controversy and be noticed only by the right people and uh, in the right way. Last month, one man who had uh, observed that code for most of his life abandoned it to make uh, astonishing uh, accusations against the re reigning Pope, going so far as to call upon him to do what? Resign. To resign. So that's the man behind the call of the resignation of Pope Francis. Then uh, again, as I mentioned before, as we lo looked at before, then uh, one by one we start seeing, we start noticing and hearing in the news uh, about sex abuse from this country, that country, and this other one. And then uh, putting all of these things together, there have been an outcry calling for the Pope to resign. Resign. And the, the Catholic Church had been stirred up as a result of this. But notice the next article here. It says, from the New York Times, September 12, 2018, Pope Francis summons world's bishop to meet on sexual abuse. Pope Francis summoned bishops from around the world to Rome for an unprecedented meeting focused on protecting, uh, quote-unquote, minors. The order on Wednesday comes as the Pope wrestles with a global clerical sexual abuse crisis and explosive accusations of a cover-up that have uh, shaken, or what's the word there? Stirred. Shaken uh, his papacy and the entire Roman uh, Catholic uh, Church. So, as the papacy is being stirred or shaken, what was the message we were told to proclaim at this time? The three angels' uh, messages. With zeal, boldness, and uh, and power. Wow. Notice another one here. It says uh, from Life Site News, uh, breaking leak sex abuse report rocks German church uh, September 12, 2018, uh, over 3,677 victims. It says the leak information about the so called MHG study is causing a great, what's the word again? Stir, Stir in Germany since it finally brings to light the murky history of the German bishops' handling of abuse cases. And, as expected, their conduct is similar to many bishops in the U.S., cover-ups and uh, moving priests into another parish. So they've been trying to cover up all of these things. But uh, in spite of uh, the, the way they try to cover this up, the media, again, have, uh, has been, have been allowed to expose some of, of these things. I said have been allowed. Now, I'm coming to why I said this. There's a reason why the media have been allowed to expose these things. Notice with me. 
from LifeSide. Continue the same uh, article here. The research team, a secular group of scientists, who are they? A secular group of scientists. At the end of their abuse report, notice carefully with me, makes some general recommendations. What are they? The strict sexual morality and the obligatory celibacy are seen as problem, problem. as problems. Why have we read something like that? This is something that we read from the Bible. This, this is in uh, Daniel chapter 11. Let's turn there. Daniel chapter 11. Uh, now we are seeing, uh, this is, who is, this, who is seeing this, saying this again? The a secular group of science, and they seeing the problem. Daniel chapter 11, uh, the Bible prophesied uh, the doctrine, uh, one of the doctrines, uh, teachings uh, of uh, the papacy. It says uh, in Daniel chapter 11, let's look at, uh, speaking of the papacy, verse 36, And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, what are the next few words there? Nor the desire of women. What does that mean? It's the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church, as it says here back to the article, the strict sexual morality and the obligatory, what's the word? Celibacy. Celibacy. That's the same word or the same thing we just read here in uh, Daniel chapter 11. Commending their priests not to married that they have, they have to be, they have to stay celibate, right? They, as a result of that, what, that, as a result of that teaching, what, what has been happening? It has been creating a problem for young people, right? That's what we've been reading in the media. Now, back to the screen. This is, keep in mind, this is a secular group of science that's making these recommendations here. Notice, it says, Cleric, uh, clericalism is also mentioned. The rejection of the ordination of homosexual men should urgently be, what is it? Oh. Reconsidered. Why? Because you have young boys that have been abused by priests. Back to the screen. The report states mandatory celibacy could be a risk factor. Now let me see if you're getting what's, uh, what's happening here. Why, I asked the question a moment ago, why was the media allowed to cover this? Why was the media allowed to cover this to the point where the Catholic Church had been shaken up, as we just read, has been stirred up to the point where they're calling for the resignation of Pope Francis? Why? If you read what we just read here in this article carefully, it, it's a smoke screen, brothers and sisters. Let me explain to you what's happening here. We, we are told that what, what we, based on what we just read in Acts chapter 4, the disciples were being forbidden to preach in the name of Jesus. Meaning, they wanted them to change their doctrines. You're getting the point. They wanted them to change their doctrines. In Acts chapter 17 was the same thing. That they said, because of the disciples' teachings, the whole world was stirred up. They turned the world upside down. down. So in other words, they wanted to silence the teaching of the disciples or wanted them to change their doctrine. This secular group of science, scientists is calling for the Catholic Church to change their doctrines. <laughs> this is a smoke screen. This is what's going to happen to God's people. You either change your doctrine or be killed. Do you see it? They, they're trying to use the Roman Catholic Church crisis right now. To put in a law? To, yes. To show to the world that they're not showing favoritism. 
It's a smoke screen. Understand what's happening here. You see, for a long time, for weeks now, as I've been watching the development of this news and been covering it at the same time, but in the back of my mind, I kept asking the question, Lord, this must be a smoke screen. Why are they allowing the media to talk about this? I know you do allow things to, uh, to come to light. I know you do allow this, Lord, but also why? Now, why is this thing? I know also it is uh, an opportunity for your church, for your people to wake up and to also use uh, the understanding uh, of Bible prophecy you have given them to cry aloud, to help the world to see even more, even deeper about the nature of Babylon. But there was another reason. The other reason is what I just explained to you. You see, how do you control people? For example, 9-11, right? You create a crisis, right? You create a crisis in order to pass laws, right? That's what happened in 9-11. Because some of the laws that they passed after 9-11 they would not have been able to pass it if there wasn't such a crisis because the people will, will do what? Will go against it. Will revolt. But now because there was a crisis, now they use the crisis, which, by the way, you know, evidences show that it was an inside job. Um, but they use the crisis to make the people feel like... Uh, they're trying to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. so this is a, up. yes, this is thesis versus antithesis. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what we just read here on the screen. They are using this crisis here. They have allowed this crisis to come to the media so that uh, now the Pope could also be... Uh, show his leadership as well, that he's going to take care of the matter. Notice with me another one here. It says from the Washington Post, despite scandals, Australian's Catholic Church stands firm against reporting child abuse revealed in confession. So what are they attacking here? Now the government are saying that, uh, again, just like we just read the previous article from the secular scientists, saying that uh, the, their recommendation is for the papacy to change uh, their teachings, their doctrines. Now we have the government of Australia and other government that are saying that uh, the, the church uh, must uh, change its uh, doctrine in, when it comes to confession because according to the papacy, they, they, according to their teaching, their doctrine, whatever is being confessed at the uh, confessional booth must remain there. They cannot take it uh, anywhere else. But now the government is saying that uh, because you have had priests that have done the, uh, committed these crimes and have gone to the co confessional booth, you have to report these things. You have to report which priests that have confessed these things to the authorities. But the, back to the art article, it says, despite, despite scandals, Australia's Catholic Church stands firm against reporting child abuse revealed where? In confession. Notice the next article here. It says, Australia's Catholic leaders reject call to report sex abuse heard where again? In confessions. Catholic leaders in Australia on Friday rejected a government push to force priests to report accusations of child sexual abuse heard during confession, saying it would violate a, no, it's not, a secret right infringe on religious freedom and ultimately do little to protect the children. So, again, keep in mind the smoke screen here. What's happening here? Sooner or later, we will be the ones that will be brought before 
governors, before king, to give an answer for what, what, what we believe and why we believe it. And uh, the threat will be, you either give up that belief or die. So this is what's happening here. Notice this article here from Vice. The horrific Catholic church sex abuse scandal is about to get a, low, a lot worse. It says, last week, in the wake of a grand jury report that concluded at least 300 priests had preyed on some 1,000 children across Pennsylvania since the 1940s, attorneys, notice now, general in New York and uh, New Jersey announced investigations into Catholic church sexual abuse. Missouri, Nebraska, and Illinois have launched state-level probes as well, and more are likely to follow. New York went uh, so far as to issue civil water subpoenas, subpoenas in uh, all eight uh, of its uh, dioceses. New, New Jersey has created a special criminal task force to look into seven calling for the production of internal church documents that relate to the handling of abuse cases. Again, same thing we are looking at here, trying to force the Roman Catholic Church to change their teachings, their doctrines. But notice what, it, what else it goes on to say. It says, notice, notice what the, the media said carefully. I think we're going to look back on this as a what? as a Martin Luther moment where someone's nailing the thesis to the door. My question is, are you willing to nail the thesis on the door right now? The media, the medias are nailing the thesis on the door of Wittenberg once again. See, the media is telling us that it's time to have a, a revolution once again. It's time to, to pick up the, the Bible and spirit of prophecy the three angels' messages, and nail them to the door of Wittenberg one more time. Nail them to the door of Rome one more time. The media is calling this crisis here a Martin Luther moment. A Martin Luther moment. Notice with me what Sister White says here. Great Controversy 609. Wycliffe, Huss, Luther, Tyndall, Baxter, Wesley urge that all doctrines be brought to the test of the Bible and declared that they would renounce everything which it condemned. Against these men, what happened to, to, to them? Persecution raged with relentless fury, yet they ceased not to declare the truth. They, they, what? They ceased not to declare the truth. Different periods, notice, notice carefully now, different periods in the history of the church have each been marked by the development of some spe special truth, adapted to the necessities of God's people at that time. Every new truth has made its way against hatred and opposition. So let's pause there. So this is not new. Every what again? New truth has made its way against hatred and opposition. So don't be surprised if you, if you start proclaiming this message and then you start uh, facing opposition and trials because uh, what happened then will happen again. It's just uh, history is repeating itself. Or Bible prophecies are repeating themselves again. Back to the screen. It says here, Those who were blessed with its light were tempted and tried. The Lord gives a special truth for the people in an emergency. Who dare refuse to publish it? He commands his servants to present the last invitation of mercy to the world. They cannot remain what? Silent. Except at the what? Peril at the peril of their souls. So we cannot remain silent at this time. Now, again, as I started to show you that the smoke screen there, by exposing the papacy, which is a, an, a good opportunity for us to use the Bible and spirit of prophecy to, sh to, sh to share more light uh, into, the uh, into the subject. But also, they are doing this because that will, they will use the same tactic against us to try to cause us to deny our faith, to try to cause us to change our doctrine. And that's the reason why you saw the 
General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists gave us the, the great hoax instead of uh, the great controversy. Denying the faith, removing everything that has to do with the Roman church. Right. Notice with me, back to this article here, ABC News 24, September 7, 2018. Catholic Church, notice again, must what? Reform. Reform canon law in wake of child sex abuse royal commission. So what are they telling the Roman Catholic Church to do here? Change, doctrine. Change the doctrine. But what did uh, Sister White say? We cannot remain silent, silent at this time. Rome will never change. That's right. But as a result of this crisis, I had been asking for the answer. For weeks, I had been struggling with this. I said, why, Lord, why are they exposing this thing? Then as I started seeing these articles, and I'm like, oh, all of a sudden the light went on. I said, that's why they're going to be using the same thing against us for believing that the, the first beast of Revelation 13 is the papacy, for believing uh, well, Daniel 7, the little horn there, is the papacy, for believing the second beast of Revelation 13 is the United States of America, these things will be held against us. And they will use those things against us for fear or bring fear against us. They will either kill us or give up the doctrine. So now they're forcing the, quote unquote, quote unquote, forcing the Roman church to change their can canon law, their, the, uh, their con confessional rights. Um, what else that we looked at? Uh, um, reporting to uh, the authorities uh, if uh, a priest has, has confessed uh, of uh, abuse uh, a child. But the Catholic Church said that's against their teaching and doctrine, but yet they want to comply a little bit. So now they're going to say, well, we show no favoritism with the Roman Catholic Church. But what should we do in matters like this? Like Peter, we ought to obey God rather than men. Remember, the angel came down from heaven with great power and glory. It is the glory of Christ. It is the power of God. It's not our glory. It's not our power. It's His. So therefore, we should not be afraid of no man. Back to the screen. Again, a Catholic Church must reform canon law in wake of child sex abuse royal commission, says. Australia's Catholic leaders delivered their official response to the royal commission on institutional responses to sexual abuse last week. The joint response from the Australian Catholic Bishops Conference and Catholic w Religious Australia, which represents nuns, sisters and brothers, monks, friars, bishops, and religious leaders accept, notice now, most of the recommendation of the Royal Commission. So, what did they do? They cast out. Yes. So they, they're going to use that against you and I, brothers and sisters. So the Catholic Church bow, right? At least that's what it seems like. They bow. They are willing to change their doctrine, their teaching. Should we do this? No, and they're not really willing no. to change. They're not going to change. What does the Bible say about this? It is a leopard. It does not change. No. And Sister White says, uh, that is a chameleon. It changes colors mm -hmm. for the moment, right? Nah. Notice now. It says, uh, notice, same article says, state law versus canon law. Now, what? pause there. What we are seeing here is uh, a re-emerge -emer of church and state. That's also the smoke screen we are seeing here. That's a way to bring the state and the church together. That's what this says here. Back to the screen. State law versus canon law. The seal of confessional. The royal commission recommended that laws concerning mandatory reporting to child protection authorities should not exempt persons in religious ministry from being required to report knowledge of suspicions formal. Let's pause there. What is that, what is that saying? What is that saying? That's saying 
you must give up your faith. That's what it's saying. Change your doctrines to go along with the state. Back to the screen. In whole or in part, on the basis of information, disclosed in or in connection with a religious confession. It goes on to say, this recommendation is really asking, notice carefully, this recommendation is really asking the state and territory legislatures to take action. Some of them are already proceeding to remove legal exemptions for priests, penitent, confidentiality in the confessional. The existence of the exemptions reflects a time when what? When church and state overlap more in terms of membership. Do you get it now? Do you get it now? This is a way to unify the church and the state. That's part of the reason why we have been allowed, the media have been allowed to expose these things. It's a way to bring church and state together to create the image of the beast. Notice that same article goes on to say, is voluntary celibacy the answer? Notice now. Recommendation 16.18 was that the ACBC should request the Holy See to consider introducing voluntary what? Celibacy for diocesan clergy. The Pope has what? Already indicated mandatory, what's the word again? Celibacy is up for review in where? South Africa. So then, uh, Seventh-day Adventists, the remnant of the seed of the woman, should also bring some of its doctrines for review as well, right? Should we do this? This is what has, is being preached by many within the Seventh-day Adventist church, by many pastors. Mm -hmm. That doctrine, that old doctrine uh, of the papacy being the Antichrist, we don't believe this anymore. We gave that up a long time ago. Who are they saying is? <laughs> it's somebody else. Who knows? It, 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 it will come uh, during the quote unquote seven years of uh, tribulation. Back to the screen again. The Pope has already indicated mandatory celibacy is up for review in South America. Pope Francis has told the bishops there to sort it out. So now the Catholic Church is considering what? It will not be mandatory for a priest to be unmarried, right? Why? Because that's Babylon. Babylon can change its doctrines. But the God that we serve is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? It does, he does not change. Notice with me. Another article here. That's the man there again. Pope Francis compares, notice now, Vatican whistleblower to what? So if you don't change your doctrine, you'll be seen as an evil person. That's the, that's, that's, that's the math there. So the person who exposes the Pope that we saw at the beginning is now being called Satan for exposes, exposing the papacy. Notice, back to the screen. Satan, the great accuser, has been unleashed against the bishops of the church. Pope Francis said Tuesday, in a thinly veiled reference to the former Vatican nuncio to the United States, despite the Pope's frequent calls for transparency and accountability for those responsible for committing or covering up sex abuse, he seemed to suggest Tuesday that the former nuncio had behaved like Satan by making public the errors of his brother bishops. So, what will we call what? Satan. Notice now. This one says, from the Daily News, while the Pope is accusing this man for acting like Satan, but what has the Catholic Church been doing? Notice now. Catholic Church spent $2 million on major New York lobbying firms to black what? Child to black what? Child sex law reform. But yet, pause there. But yet, that man who quote unquote exposed the papacy, the Pope called him Satan. 
Satan, because they want to continue abuse these, these young people. But yet, they have been the one, back to the screen, they have been the one behind the movement blocking laws that would make it uh, legal to prosecute se um, sexual abusers. Notice now, not leaving it to divine change, the State Catholic Conference has turned in recent years to some of Albany's most well-connected and influential lobby firms to help block a bill that would make it easier for child sex abuse victims to seek justice. Why? They, they were lobbying this to block that bill because they don't want their priests to be prosecuted, right? Back to the screen. The Catholic Conference, headed by Timothy Cardinal Dolan, this priest there, has used Wilson Elzer and a few other individuals here to lobby against the Child Victims Act as well as for or against uh, what? Uh, other measures. But yet, back to the screen here, it says here, September 13, 2018, Pope Francis again says, Catholics who enter into logic of accusing are doing Satan's work. But yet, there, there are the same ones trying to block laws that, that would made it, make it easier to prosecute those uh, who are abusing, those priests who are abusing uh, these uh, young children. But yet the Pope says, you are working for the devil for exposing this. Back to the screen. The Pope in his homily said that Christians should never enter into gossiping or into the, the what? The logic of insults, which only cause war. Pope at Mass today again refer to the great accuser who is uh, among us. Who will be the great accuser in these last days for calling the papacy the harlot woman of Revelation 17? Who will be the great accusers? For exposing the crimes of the papacy. What did we just read in Revelation chapter 17? It says this power is responsible for all of the abomination of the earth. All of the crimes, they are behind most of the wars that have been fought recently. Even some, we're talking about even back to World War I, World War II, and all of these things, they, are, they were behind them. Notice with me what it says here. This is from the book, Fox's Book of Martyrs. It says, under the guise of Christianity, what happened there? The papacy church committed more enormities then ever disgrace the annals of uh, paganism. More what? what? Talking about the papacy. Right. Mm -hmm. No wonder Revelation 17 says uh, that this power is responsible for all the problems in this world. Back to the screen. Disregarding the maxims and the spirit of the gospel, the papal church arming herself with the power of the sword vexed the church of God and wasted it for several centuries, a period most appropriately termed in history, the Dark Ages. And uh, as uh, quoted there in Revelation 17, the kings of the earth gave their power to the beast. That's what we see happening behind uh, the exposing the crisis at the Vatican right now. That's part of the reason to bring church and state together. We, we saw last time that uh, the second beast, the United States of America, representing by the evangelicals and uh, Donald Trump, we saw Trump was defending the Pope. You, saw, you, saw, you remember that? that? Trump was defending the Pope, brothers and sisters. The kings of the earth, in spite of what has been exposed here, like it says here, will give their power to the beast. This is one of the biggest smoke screen that have uh, been published through or being exposed through the media. This is a way of bringing church and state together. This is a way of also trying to shut out those who will dare uphold the, their, their teachings, especially the, the three angels' messages. Go to the book of Isaiah with me. The book of Isaiah, which book? 
Remember the disciples, Isaiah 50, who are we going to? Remember the disciples in spite of, where were the disciples, by, by the way? When uh, the Bible says uh, they were going from one place to another and stirring up uh, the world. Where were they? Who was in power? Rome was in power at the time. Pagan Rome. Notice with me, chapter 50 of the book of Isaiah. Let's look at the verse uh, Let's look at the verse, verse 4. It says, uh, are you there? Chapter 50, verse 4. The Lord God have given me the what? The tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him. That is, we, we, he wakeneth mor morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as he, as what? As, as the learned. So the Lord God has given me what? The tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word. Like, likewise, we have been given the tongue of wisdom, the understanding of a Bible prophecy, to speak a word in due season. And the season has come for this. Amen? The season has come for this. And the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 21, our time will come as it came for Christ and uh, uh, for the disciples. We are going to the book of Luke. Chapter, chapter 21, again, the message must be proclaimed with uh, more boldness, even uh, while we see things are intensifying uh, and to try to shut up the message. It says here, chapter 21 of the book of Luke, uh, are you heading there or are you there? there. And the Bible says uh, in uh, verse 15, for I will give you what again? A mouth. And what else? And a wisdom which uh, all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay. No, what's the word again? No resist. What does that mean? They will be, yeah, and then they will be stirred up. They will not be able to resist it. They will either do something for the truth or against the truth. Amen? Notice now. And he shall be betrayed, both by parents and brethren and king's souls, and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put uh, to death. Uh, and ye shall be hated of all men. For what? For my name's sake. But notice with me. Verse 19. In your patience do what? Possess ye your souls. In your patience do what? Possess ye your soul. So did God say here, once you start speaking the message, and uh, persecution start coming your way, Stop preaching the message? No. No. In your patience, it says, possess ye your souls. Keep preaching. Keep, keep bringing the light to the world. Amen? Keep bringing the light to the world. Let, let's look at Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6. In verse, uh, verse, uh, verse 9, it says, uh, this was Stephen there preaching. It says in Stephen, verse 8, I'm sorry. Chapter 6 of the book of Acts, beginning in verse 6. Verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and what's the word there? Power. Power. Did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose a certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and the Cyrenians and the Alexandrians and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not, notice carefully now, and they were not able to resist this what again? The wisdom. the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Because why? He spake with boldness and, and power, being filled with the spirit of God. Amen? That is our experience. Though we might be small in numbers, brothers and sisters, it will be our experience. But we need in order to be filled with Power, that power there goes back to Revelation 18, verse 1. The fourth angel there, which is also represented the outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God. Like the disciples in Acts chapter 1, go to chapter 1 this time. Acts chapter 1, notice with me verse 15 in Acts chapter 1. Notice with me again, Jesus gave the disciples the promise of the Holy Spirit. It says, uh, well, let's back up to verse, uh, verse uh, 8. It says, uh, 
But ye shall receive, what's the word? Power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be, what is it? Witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and uh, in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of, uh, of the earth. Notice, what else is, let's keep on down to, uh, to verse 15. And in those days, Peter stood, I mean, I'm sorry, stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of, the, notice with me carefully now, the number of uh, names together were about, uh, how many? And hundred and uh, twenty. So how many of them that receive this outpouring, that receive that power? Just a hundred and twenty. Is that a big number? No. no. Out of millions of people, that is a, a very small number. But these men, as we read in the, the latter part of the book of Acts, they went about uh, just 120 of them. Preach the world and stir up the whole world. And that was the Roman world. Are we living in the Roman world again? Yes. Yeah. Progression. Say that again. Geometric progression. Yes. Amen. Are we living in a woman world again? Yes. And uh, what do we need? That Spirit. precious ingredient. That vital ingredient, the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit of God. And to preach this message uh, with uh, boldness. You see, this is the reason why Paul, again, as, as uh, mentioned earlier, Paul was not ashamed of the gospel of uh, Jesus Christ. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ free people from the bondage of sin, from slavery. That is the reason why the message needs to be proclaimed. That's the power we find in the message. As uh, many hear that message, wherever they might be, whether if it's within the prison walls, in the wilderness, at the Vatican, wherever they might be, those chains that have uh, locked them up, or that have kept them uh, bound, may not uh, literally fall, but uh, they will be free. Indeed, if the Son shall make thee free, ye shall be free. free indeed. And that's the reason why, as we're coming to a close here, go to the book of Acts chapter 7, 16 with me. Acts chapter 16. The gospel free others. The proclamation of the gospel free people from the shackle, bondage of sins, from oppression. Notice with me. Chapter 16, verse 19. It says, are you there? And when, uh, notice with me, let's back up, let's get uh, the uh, application here. It says here, and it came to pass, verse 16, and it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with what? A spirit of with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her master much gain by so saying, the same followed Paul and us and cried saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. Now, she was mocking. You understand? The, she was not uh, trying to promote uh, the message of Paul and Silas. She was just mocking. It was a way of ridiculing, uh, um, of mocking, I should say, the message. It says, not, notice now, and this verse 18 says, did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I commend thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Was that power? Amen. That was power. Notice now. And he came out the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and did what? And drew them into the marketplace unto the what? The rulers. Was that the, a stirred? Did they stir up this master here? Yes. Did they stir up the master here? Yes. Did they free that woman? Yes. 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 That's what God wants to do in these last days. Verse 20. And brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do what? 
exceedingly, what's the word? Troubled. Troubled our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither do, to observe being, uh, being what? Romans. Romans. <laughs> that was a Roman world that the disciples of Jesus Christ were called to stir it up. And we've been called to do the same thing in these last days. Amen? As we read in Revelation 13 that the, the second beast will cause the first beast to regain its supremacy again, to bring back the dark ages, meaning it will be a Roman world again. Notice with me on the screen. It says here, from Review and Herald, October 13 to 1904, paragraph 3. The prophecies in the 18th of the Revelation will soon be fulfilled. During the proclamation of the third angel's message, another angel is to come, notice now, come down from heaven, having what? Great, Great power. power. And the earth is to be lighted with his glory. The Spirit of the Lord will so graciously bless consecrated human instrumentalities that men, women, and children will open their lips in praise and thanksgiving, filling the earth with the knowledge of God and with His uh, unsurpassed glory as the waters uh, cover the sea. You see the power there? As the waters cover the sea, that's the same power we must have in these last days. God is calling, uh, as we just read here, men, women, and children to help uh, finish this work. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, as I'm thinking of those last few words that we just read here, I'm thinking of uh, Isaiah, where you asked the question, Whom shall I send? And Isaiah responded by saying, Here am I, send me. Lord, uh, all of us have been called, but I pray that uh, we are also been chosen because your word says, Many are called, few are chosen. Father, help us to understand our condition first and then also help us to understand the condition of things around us. It is not business as usual so that uh, we can have a zeal and the love of Jesus Christ in our heart to see men and women and children that are dying for lack of uh, the spiritual manner and to bring this uh, to them before probation closes. We want to thank you in a special way once again for helping us to understand at least a little bit what is happening in our, around the world and how that all of these things are connected with uh, signs of the times, with Bible prophecies. We pray that you will continue to help us to see and to understand and to discern your word until you come again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.